we have a bit of an interesting end of week video for you guys here on a Friday. We got four really interesting stories from Nintendo we want to dive into. One of them dealing with an upcoming game, another dealing with Nintendo. Well, not really Nintendo, more of the Pokemon company going after a YouTuber and really just firing a warning out there for all other content creators that are using similar content and so much more. You know what? It's all down in the timestamps below. And well, this is not the show we're going to be launching in April. This is us working towards what will be a brand new type of news show coming in April. Let's go ahead though and dive right into our very first story. And this deals with a brand new open world game is seemingly coming to Nintendo Switch. And we know this because of somebody who works at a company known as Lunate Games. How did we find out about this? Well, we found out about it thanks to Trey 81 over here on YouTube. And he found this little bit of information where it says, this person at Lunate Games, who currently works there as a full-time employee, managed a team to optimize level streaming in open world game on code side to fit Nintendo Switch limitations. Game hangs similar to Batman Arkham Knight, and that is a video from three months ago from Digital Foundry. He links there showing the issues that that game had and that this game doesn't have those issues were completely fixed and the titles under NDA. Now he also managed a team to optimize several bottlenecks in an open world game where the average improvement went from 60 to 70 milliseconds down to 33 to 37 milliseconds per frame. And again, the titles under NDA. Now I know a lot of you are probably just wondering, well, Nate, it being under NDA, what does this really, really mean? Uh, who is Lunate Games and why should we really care about this? I mean, look, open world games can be a dime a dozen. Well, let's take a look at the Lunate Games official website here. We say long live the game and you'll notice something down here where they talk about all the platforms they support and what they've co-developed and helped develop over time. But you'll see their partners are Saber, Crytek, Playknot, LTG, and Libheim. Now, their projects, and these are just some recent stuff they've done, seem to all be engaged by Saber Interactive. So Saber Interactive is the main company they work with to create ports. And you can see they did the remaster port to PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. They took Remnant and put it on Switch. They also took Kingdom Come Deliverance here and put this on Nintendo Switch. So then you might be going, well, what the heck is Saber Interactive working on? What do they have upcoming? Because if they're a company that really works with Saber Interactive all the time, then there must be something exciting and here's where we've got to start guessing because i don't really know which one of these games are open world so when we dive into saber's website right now they have a whole bunch of games down here so we see space marine 2 coming out september 9 2024 we see jurassic park survival is that an open world game don't know it's all tba uh is it john carpenter's toxic commando that's coming out later in 2024 is it a quiet place the game is that open world I don't know. What about Heading Out? That's coming out on May 7th. I don't believe that one's open world. Expeditions, a Mud Runner game. They also have Wild Card Football, which is out now. Now we're into their Out Now game. So it's probably not any of these unless it's an older Saber Interactive game coming out. Chances are it's probably not one of those. It's it, It's got to be these ones that aren't out yet. And, you know, the leading candidates, maybe Jurassic Park Survival is an open world game. You know, it, this is just one of those situations where... It's really just taking your best guess. So I don't know what you guys think about this. What I do know is I want you guys to go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Are you surprised that another open world game from a third party developer seemingly is coming to Switch maybe even this year? Or is this just for you guys par for the course and just what you expect from third parties today? Now, one thing that Nintendo announced last year was that they were opening up a brand new Nintendo museum out in Japan. And that's awesome. I love Nintendo museums. But uh, interesting fact here, we haven't really heard any updates about it until today. Here we are over at My Nintendo News where it says Nintendo Museum completion date is now in April. And you can remember that wasn't the original date. So you may recall that last September, Nintendo confirmed in their fall 2023 Direct that a Nintendo Museum was in the works. At the time of the Direct, the building wasn't actually completed yet. In fact, it had a completion date of March 2024. Since then, there hasn't been any further developments. Well, that's now changed. A Twitter user has posted a picture of a notice that is now being displayed at the museum's construction site. It says the museum is now slated to be finished by April 30th. 
that's unfortunately later than the March date. And you can see this screenshot right here. So look, I'm not super upset about this, of course. I wasn't gonna be going to this anytime soon, but it's still just a very interesting thing that's here that, that it got delayed a little bit. Look, construction takes as long as it takes. Construction being completed on the 30th, I would say this probably isn't opening in April probably going to open sometime in may but hey who knows maybe we'll get some future nintendo directs hosted from this place maybe it'll even be featured in the next nintendo direct i have no idea but what i do have an idea about is something the pokemon company is now doing and they did this to a massive major youtuber we got to go over here to twitter to find out about new copyright strikes going out so this claim from Noah J, who is a like what a five million plus YouTuber, he's pretty big. It says warning to all content creators: if your video feature any sort of modded Pokemon content, I would delete or unlist it ASAP. I just got a manual copyright strike. So this wasn't like their team doing some automated stuff. They specifically targeted his video, and he made this seven years ago, featuring Pokemon modded into Call of Duty Zombies. Two more strikes and the channel gets deleted. You also you get limitations with your first strike as well. And you can see this all here. This was a long time ago. Content's found in the entire video. Content used, Pikachu, Gengar, Meowth, and Mewtwo. Now, again, there's nothing you can really do about this because that content is owned by the Pokemon company. So good luck going to like legally fight that copyright strike. It's not a false copyright strike. It's just kind of a, hey, do you really need to do this, Nintendo? Especially on a seven-year-old video. But they did, and this is just a screenshot example of what he, what the mod was, where you can see that he's taken out some Pikachus. Now, again, I think that this is just a general warning for all content creators, myself included. But you gotta be really careful the way you cover Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. There's a lot of do's and do nots. And in this case, this is just someone playing games. And I, I, I'm just gonna say this, if you're somebody playing any sort of Nintendo content, Look, we've seen issues with Nintendo going after people playing modded versions of Tears of the Kingdom. We've seen you now Pokemon Company going after modded versions of Call of Duty. Look, if you wanna mod things, that's fine. That's your prerogative, but you need to make sure the companies that you're implementing mods from are actually okay with it. It's very clear Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are two companies that really don't want you modifying their stuff into other people's games. Hell, they don't even want you modifying their games. Heck, they don't even want you emulating their games. So. I think it's just unfortunate that Nintendo is this way, but this is what it is. This is obviously more on the Pokemon company this side around, but you just kind of have to accept that this is their copyrighted work and they have 100% control. And so if you're gonna be a content creator, keep that in the back of your mind. One thing I always tell people is when you're a content creator like me or like this person or anyone else, and you start doing it for a living, it's a job and you're making money. And as a business, you want to avoid any legal issues. The best way to do that is to just not do things that you don't think other companies would like. So just throwing that out there as some free advice for anyone trying to come up in the content creation space. Uh, speaking of the content creation space, something interesting was discovered for Tears of the Kingdom. Now this is actually content for Tears of the Kingdom that was beta. So there is a bunch of content within the files of Tears of the Kingdom that contain old versions of the dungeons in the game. Now that's cool and look there's an entire video out here from a specific YouTuber. In fact what's this guy's name? I think it is uh, Gaming Reinvented that I encourage you to go watch. It's 24 minutes long. Most of it is just showing uh, the forms of the dungeons before they were in their final form and there's some changes but not any major ones but the spirit temple is one that i think actually had the most amount of changes because it used to be a gauntlet apparently that ended up not being what the final version was the final version was just a couple of rooms uh so i find this just to be interesting and we'll head on over here and just show a little bit of footage here uh from his video and look it, it, this stuff is always really fascinating when you discover these little things in the code and clearly the only reason he's able to probably execute this is due to modifying and hacking and maybe even emulation that i can't say for certain but what i do know is that what you're seeing on screen right now is content that was cut from the game 
All the dungeons, by the way, that were originally created for the game were in their own instance. They weren't actually in the open world that they are in the finalized version. Uh, and this was sort of a small little gauntlet of stuff that you had to go through, which is more in depth than what we ended up getting in the final game. And, and, and just really interesting. This is just straight up a idea they had for the Spirit Temple that ended up just getting completely cut. Uh, and that's one reason why I just wanted to cover it. I think it's just really fascinating looking behind the scenes of stuff and you know we saw this obviously you know at the game developers conference and you know what we're gonna save the game developers conference stuff because there's a lot going on there that we learned about mario and the process behind nintendo games and even uh tears of the kingdom and we're gonna be gathering all of that into a different video to land next week or maybe even over the weekend because there's a lot of fascinating things we learned about how nintendo approaches game development that i really think is worth discussing so i want to thank you guys so much for being here i am nathaniel robojets from nintendo prime and we'll catch you in the next video